Green Arrow, The Longbow Hunters, is a seminal comic book miniseries that redefined the character of Green Arrow. Written and illustrated by Mike Grell, it was published by DC Comics in 1987. Before The Longbow Hunters, Green Arrow, also known as Oliver Queen, was a secondary character in the DC Universe. He was often seen as a Robin Hood figure with trick arrows and a somewhat light-hearted demeanor. His character had been part of the Justice League and had undergone several iterations since his debut in 1941. The Longbow Hunters deals with adult themes such as violence, torture, and the psychological toll of crime fighting, setting it apart from typical superhero pair of the time. Grell's realistic art style and detailed backgrounds added a gritty, noir-like atmosphere to the series. The series redefined Oliver Queen as a more complex, morally ambiguous character. It stripped away the campiness and made him a more relatable and human hero. The success of The Longbow Hunters led to an ongoing Green Arrow series by Mike Grell, which continued to explore the darker, more realistic take on the character. Green Arrow The Longbow Hunters is often credited with elevating Green Arrow from a lesser known hero to a significant and respected character within the DC Universe. Its influence is still felt in modern interpretations of Green Arrow, including his portrayal in television shows like Arrow. Hey yo everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving deep into one of the Emerald Archer's defining moments, Green Arrow from the Longbow Hunters. This figure is part of Wave 2 of McFarlane Toys' digital line. After reviewing the first wave, I was hesitant to continue, but Wave 2 really caught my eye with its classic versions of DC heroes, including this iconic Green Arrow. Let's start with the packaging. The front of the box prominently displays McFarlane Toys Digital Green Arrow under the DC Direct line. There's a large clear window showing up the figure and its accessories. On the right side, you'll see McFarlane Toys Digital Green Arrow Longbow Hunter, along with the DC Direct logo. The left side continues the window display and includes some notes and a barcode promoting the digital collectible line. Finally, the back of the box features artwork from the Longbow Hunters comics, showcasing Green Arrow space and an arrow. That's it for the packaging. Now, let's crack this open and see if McFarlane did justice to this version of Green Arrow in action figure form. The figure scales at 7 and a quarter inches or 18 and a half centimeters. He comes with the standard McFarlane art card with a small biography at the back. McFarlane Toys Digital Version Redemption Card and the McFarlane Toys Digital Standard Stand. The other accessories is already on him now. Basically, a file of arrows that we can put on his backpack and then a bow that has no string and then a single arrow, which, to be honest, I really don't like the material that McFarlane used on this arrow because, yes, you can see it's no longer straight. It's just too soft. 
this has always been my issue with characters that are archer type when they are created into action figure form they just find it very hard to actually you know recreate the their weapon wherein in this case they did not even put any string on the bow one example for me for a company who actually successfully did that in action figure form is a spin master now if you've seen my review of this action figure for spin master of alloy uh, from the horizon playstation game as you can see they were able to recreate the bow and arrow weapon i mean this is actually the first time that i reviewed an action figure in six inch four in six inch scale that can actually do this perfectly i mean just look at that they were actually able to recreate the bow and arrow weapon and she looks pretty good in posing her shooting an arrow now that's something that i don't understand which why other companies cannot do because with this style this is just how i can dis display him i can't even display green arrow shooting an arrow by the way guys if you like uh, to see my review of this figure because this is an amazing figure please click click the link there in order for you to see my video reviewing this figure this is one amazing figure from spin master going back to the figure let's take a closer look of its sculpt and details now as far as the head sculpt it is actually a pretty good green arrow head sculpt my only problem is that they created this wood fixed and connected to his shoulder so there's practically no articulation for the head because despite of the fact that the hood is up well you cannot you can you cannot really remove it so yeah that really hindrance the head's articulation you can practically just pose him looking forward like that or looking at the side like that i think they should have uh created this figure with this hood completely separate from this part of the figure so that you know you can at least add articulation for the head i like their choice of green and apple green and a bit of yellow color that they chose because it really really shows and represents the classic colors of green arrow now looking at the uh, looking at the mold of the figure itself i'm not really sure if there's any reuse of this uh, that was uh done in this figure but if there is i'm not really quite familiar with it i find this mold completely new but if you guys uh know uh if there if this is a reuse of a mold that they already released please leave it in the comment but yeah knowing mcperlin as far as the molded details is concerned it is there so the figure doesn't really look boring yeah as far as sculpt and paintwork this figure is a 10 As for the articulation, that is where this figure actually falls short because, well, as I said before, this the way this hood was uh, made that is connected to the shoulders limits the articulation of the head. For the hand, it does have a little 
bit of that uh, McFarlane style articulation wherein there's that ball peg there. Then there's a cut here, double jointed elbow, then double peg wrist. I think there's an abdominal cut there, but because of the design of the costume, it is practically useless. He has waist rotation though. Tie swivel is pretty limited. Double jointed knee. There's no cut there, so there's no rotation there. So ankle. And toe articulation. Because of the design of his, of his costume, he can only kick forward and kick back that far. And he can do the bend them that much. Overall, this is a very good looking classic Green Arrow figure. Actually, that's the main reason why uh, I started collecting McParlane DC Multiverse when McParlane took over because I love their sculpt. I love how his, uh, how the toys that they releases look like because they really focus on the sculpt and design of the figure, which admittedly, in a way, they sacrifice articulation. And I guess in the case of this one, that is what happened here. The figure looks very good, but as far as articulation is concerned, it is pretty limited. I mean, I know that other companies might choose or go the other way in designing the torso in order to increase articulation. Uh, but yeah, I, I still like it. It is a pretty good looking classic green arrow, and I will definitely display it on my shelf. So guys, if you reached this part of my video, thanks a lot. Thank you for the support. And again, if you like my video, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And as usual, enjoy life and keep collecting.